Come in the house. Come in the house. Jesus, you are welcome. Come in this house. Let your glory fill this house. Let your glory fill this house. Jesus, you are welcome. Let your glory fill this house. Let your love fill this house. Let your love fill this house. Jesus, you are welcome. Let your love fill the house. God, we thank you already for what you have done and what you will do. Uh, and we thank you for just being you. Uh, Lord, please allow me to decrease and you increase as I share what you've put on my heart uh, for this group. Let it be nourishment to souls. Uh, thank you in advance. Amen. Uh, so yeah, it's, I wish I could see, I wish I could be in person, but again, I was just telling Vicki like four years ago, you know, we would have been canceling this right off, right? Because of the snow or whatever. So isn't it amazing? Like four years ago, we would have never thought, I mean, I, I, let me just speak for myself. I would have never thought that I would be able to do computer stuff like this. And now I'm like, oh, Zoom, okay, we can do it. We'll shift, shift it. So even, you know, we are learning every day. I remember there's a saying in a book I um, I read, it's Illusions by Jonathan, um, by, uh, oh, I forget his name, the guy who wrote, Richard Bach. So the guy who wrote Jonathan Livingston Siegel. And he says um, in the book Illusions, one of the lines is, here's a test to know if your mission on earth is completed. If you're alive, it isn't. <laughs> And so I just think every day we are, we are, every day we wake up, this is another opportunity, even, even in this situation, even in pandemics, there are opportunities for us to grow and learn. And as, uh, as uh, those that walk with the gift of um, Ignatius and Ignatius spirituality, another way to find God in all things. So we find God in Zoom today, right? Um, so my uh, two talks today are on uh, riches, honor, and pride, and the three kinds of humility. <laughs> Not my favorite topics of the, of the exercises, I have to tell you, but I think it gives us a real, um, a real opportunity, especially given what's going on today, to see how we could fall into some of these. So I'm gonna share my screen. Yeah, so this is what we're gonna be talking about today. We'll take a break in between these two, of course, but um, riches, honor, and pride, and the three kinds of humility. And we find these like in the, be the beginning of the second week, um, kind of preparing us uh, for um, some deeper movement uh, deeper opportunities to be with God, right? And I and I look at this as the two that like we we talk about this around the two standards meditation. I mean, here we are with Ignatius and his love of military imagery, right? The two standards, and so what are standards? But there are there are things like flags at that time, right? That you could see them in a distance. And it provided a direction, like if you were in the army and you were looking for the standard. And what I think we don't talk about, it provided inspiration. You saw that standard in the middle of battle and it kind of spoke something to you and raised your heart and got you kind of excited to keep moving forward. I mean, we see that all the time, even today, whether it's, um, with, with our flag or, you know, depending upon, you know, we're in St. Louis. So like, if you see our high school crest or whatever, like you see that you say, oh, I'm a, you know, in fact, today is my um, sorority's, uh, the, the, the anniversary of its founding. And so like, I'm a 
you know, I look for that pink and green and I'm like, yes. And right. So there's this idea of seeing something visual that excites us and, 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 and inside sparks something inside. So that visual tied together with our spiritual growth kind of propels us. Um, these two, these two standards, by the way, uh, from one of my favorite movies, The Lord of the Rings, right? So the top standard was the men of um, Rohan, and the bottom one was the, the, the men or the, the, the flag of Gondor, right? So again, you saw those, and if you, if you even think about those movies, usually someone's on a horse, that their only job is to ride around with the standard, right? That's their, that is how important it is to have a standard, to have a point of uh, guidance, of reflection, of bringing things together. So, so we've got that, right? We're talking about this. So Ignatius puts it out in this way. We have two standards that are going on. We, we have Jesus in Jerusalem um, and we have, Lucifer, he says, Lucifer and Babylon. Now, Ignatius is uh, really good at making things very, uh, black and white, <laughs> which is funny. And I mean, not, not funny, but it's like, okay, this is a really bad one. This is a really good, right? Um, so when we talk about um, what's happening in this meditation, we see Lucifer kind of in Babylon and it's hell, right? However you want to imagine hell. And he's gathering his minions and he's getting ready to send them forth and to, 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 to try to convince people to join, to come under his standard, right? And then we have Jesus in Jerusalem who is gathering his, you know, and gathering his apostles and disciples and wanting to send us forth. Here's the intention that's happening in this meditation. This is to give us int intel, right? We, this meditation is to help us reflect and understand the tactics of each of the leaders. To recognize and reject, reject how the enemy has succeeded in the past, right? So, because this isn't just a one and done. If we're really honest with ourselves, we are not, we don't make one decision and stay with it. We are forever, like I know, I just said Ignatius likes black and white, but we are forever in the gray, moving, journeying. And so there are times when we are leaning more to one one, and then there are times when we recognize, we wake up and we, oh wait, we're going the wrong way, and then we need to go the other way. Um, so we're getting to understand the tactics of the leader. I like to say this a lot. The devil is, um, is wrong, but he's not stupid. What do I mean by that? I mean that the enemy knows how, to, what bothers me. <laughs> he knows what triggers me <laughs> and he will manipulate it to happen so that I might fall into it, right? So he's wrong, but he's not, he's not stupid. Uh, and I don't wanna stay in that cycle of, of, of going like that, right? So I wanna be able to recognize and embrace Jesus and follow him so that I can come into the fullness of who God made me to be. That, that's the intention of this. Sometimes, I, you know, and I really wanna st stress this, this isn't the time for us to examine our conscience. This is not the time for us to beat ourselves up. It's, you know, that's never what we're supposed to, but we're really not gonna be falling into that place because we've already we've already kind of done that work in the first week right and if we weren't even really beating ourselves up it was just kind of this understanding in the first week that we are sinners who are loved by god we are loved sinners so we we, we know that we, we're not going to keep um digging into that we're trying to move on so don't look at this um standard as a as a am i failing but again, as what can I learn? Like almost from the outside, looking into your life and saying, oh, look at how that works. Look at those connections. Look at that. Oh, I see how that could have happened, how that could have 
led me down there. So that when this tactic is used again, you don't have to fall for it because you can say, hey, I've already, I know this. I'm not going that, I'm not going that way. Does that make sense? So here's here's the evil one standard. He's he is the he is the mortal enemy of humanity. He's sending out his army to distract and recruit. And these are the tools, right? Ignatius even says this. He says, Lord, the enemy says, lure them with riches, with honor, and pride. Oh, riches, honor, and pride. And then once you, if, once you catch us on that, everything else comes from these three being totally disordered. What does that mean? What are riches, honor, and pride? If you look at the bottom of it, it says it's all about self, right? The, the, uh, uh, when we can get caught up in um, falling in those kind of riches and honor and pride, it's all about how do I look? How do I feel? It's not self-care, it's conceit, right? So that we start to think that we are super important, that we want recognition, uh, that riches, not just, um, you know, not just enough to, not, there's nothing wrong with being rich, but are we allowing the money to dictate how we move and be in, the, in our lives? There, there's, that there's not a problem wanting to make people, um, you know, please, please people or be affirmed. But when we allow that need to dictate what we do and how we do and give it a higher value of importance, then we get in some trouble. Um, if I'm just wanting to be recognized all the time, uh, I can get into trouble, right? So all of these things are kind of where we have self or where I have myself as the primary identity. My friend, Father Casey Bomir, love him to death, talks about it like this. He says, riches are any secondary identity that I live with or secondary identity that I promote as if it were the primary identity or as if it were the core of my life. Whew, that I get it, right? What's my primary identity? My primary identity defined in the first principle and foundation is to know, love, and serve God, is to be in relationship with God. That's my primary identity. Now, everything else that falls from that, any secondary identity, is supposed to help me be the best at loving, serving, praising, worshiping God. That's the core, right? So what happens when I allow those second identities um, and, and, and those identity, secondary identities, like, you know, like I'm a singer, uh, I'm a teacher, um, I'm a, you know, I, I'm a preacher. And I love those things. And I feel like I'm, I'm gifted in doing those things. But if I start to say, that's all I am, or that's what gives me, that's what I was born to do. Um, if I make those my, you know, way, the more important, then I start to use those to dictate, well, if I, are people gonna like me in that position? Am I using, you know, are people gonna like my voice? What if I have a bad, um, what if I have a bad day of singing? Is that, oh, are people still gonna like me? Are people still gonna want me? What if I don't, what if I don't have a good word to, to share today? Are people still gonna, what if I, I, I? And then I start falling down that slope of self and I, I make those secondary identities the core of my life instead of that primary identity of just being um with god so on the other side then we have christ standard right he's a lover of humanity gentle isn't it funny how we have, it seems as though the world has said that being gentle is being weak. And I always wanna say being gentle is really, it takes a lot of strength. Another one of my um, 
favorite saints, who is a really good uh, and, and loved Ignatius, is Francis de Sales. And he would say, nothing is as gentle as true strength, and nothing as, is as strong as true gentleness, right? So what, how we understand these words and what, and what they really mean, and if we think about what, what it requires of us, um, there is some strength in that. So what I love about Christ's standard, right? He walks with his army. We hear that, um, that, that Lucifer sends his army out. Like, so he's sitting in his throne and he's like preaching at them. And he's, you know, he's like, go out. This is what I want you to use. These are the tools that I've used. It says Christ is among his apostles and his disciples. It's posse, I like to say, big posse. And he says, hey, I want you to do this because we need to be in relationship with one another. We need to work together. And yeah, we, 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 each of us will bring our own kind of uniqueness, but together, together as the body of Christ. Yes, as the body of Christ, we move. And so in that respect, so instead of riches, we're not, we're, we're desiring poverty. Now, it doesn't mean necessarily um, actual poverty, although some are called to that, but poverty in terms of, I don't have to be um, the one that's always recognized. In fact, there may be times that I am misunderstood in fact, there'll be a lot of times that I misunderstood. There will be many times that uh, I will step into a situation and have to hear the barrage of insults. Um, not everyone is going to like me. <laughs> this is, and I'm, I'm confessing today, my friends, this is a hard one. I, I want people to like me. And I thank God, uh, in fact, I, I believe God put me, gave me this, uh, and I'll talk about it a little bit later. God put me in this particular word to help me realize that's not going to happen. <laughs> that's not going to happen. God has a sense of humor. Um, to that we're that not everyone is going to like us, right? And then to talk about humility, which we're going to spend a little bit more time um, after the break. But that it's not about me. It's about relationship. It's about how are we connecting with one another? No, not everyone is going to agree with everything that I have or want to say. But does that mean that I can't be in relationship with them? It's ridiculous. I, I have to say, that's what I think is, is, is we, are, we are on a trajectory right now in this country of not connecting. It, it's, it's this, you agree with me or it's over. Um, and I think social media helps with that and just the, the, all these other things, but that's not a God. That's not who, it, that's not who we are. If we are sons and daughters of Ignatius, we are moving in the marketplace and we are looking enough for, to find people that agree with the way I think necessarily, but I'm really wanting to find a space where I can connect with you because you are a child of God, because your primary identity and my primary identity match up, that we are both made image and likeness of God, and that we are made praise, reverence, and worship, right? So when we have those ideas, um, like, again, our primary identity is this, that we are made to be God's beloved, made to be God's beloved. As much as I love my husband and I love him and he, you know, he puts up with me and, you know, I, I have to say it's pretty, it's pretty hilarious that a Catholic and he's a Methodist and we are now in church of a United Church of Christ church. And <laughs> sorry, we, we are having some fun, but he, you know, as much as I love being with Tim and I love the way he knows me, so I am, I was made to be God's beloved. My secondary identity as being a loving and supportive wife of Tim should not overstep my primary identity of being God's beloved. 
And in fact, when I live in my primary identity, it makes me a better, better singer, a better wife, a better teacher, because I have my priorities in line. Uh, my primary identity is to be made, that I am made to be a friend of Jesus, a friend of Jesus, that we are walking in companionship, right? Uh, we are walking together. Companions, companions of Jesus. And we are made to be the temple of the spirit. So when I was singing, come in this house, I wasn't necessarily talking about come through Zoom and come through, you know, all the internet, which I love, but come in my house, my temple. You are welcome here in me. This is space for you, God. Come be with me, right? That's, so that's my identity. Um, you know, uh, as an example, Pedro Rupe, and I know that many of you know that Pedro Rupe was uh, one of the superior generals of the Society of Jesus. I want to say they went through a major paradigm shift under him. Um, he was the one who kind of introduced that idea of a faith that does justice and men and women for others. Um, but if you know the story of Father Rupe, he um, ended up having a stroke that took away his ability to speak. Now, this was a man who knew language, who the way that he was able to use words, right, to, to bring people together um, to, to and, and just the different um, ways that he was able to express himself. He was like, it was beautiful. And then at the end of his life, he couldn't speak. Now, some of us might've thought, oh, how difficult. What am I supposed to do? What am I going to do with my life? But Pedro Rupe recognized that his primary identity was to be that he was made in God's, he was God's beloved. He was a friend of Jesus and he was a temple of the spirit. And if he couldn't do it, show that with his voice, maybe he could show that in some other way. Right? So that's when we talk about poverty and spiritual poverty. Um, that's what I think about. Like that whatever I think is, this is the only way that I'm able to do this. God has something else. And God might take that vehicle, but God doesn't take away my primary identity of being beloved. Right? So what's the grace here? It's a freedom. I know it feels a little weird, but it's free. It's freeing. When you start to realize that I don't need to be people pleasing or I don't need to be doing all of these other things that will keep myself um, elevated and pumped up. But if I just focus on Christ, then the other stuff kind of falls into place. And it's so it's inspirational. It's not judgmental. I love this line from the movie Vanilla Sky. Now, I, it, I know that movie's kind of strange or whatever, but there was this one moment where um, Tom Cruise is, is, is talking to uh, Penelope Cruise and he's saying, you know, she said when he, he's noticing in this, in, this, in this encounter with her just in one night um, and this conversation, he he noticed that he it's like it's a it's a it's like an epiphany it's like a revelation it's like I want to change the way I'm living my life and so he says I want to be da 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 and she says to him well when are you going to start doing that he says or when how long have you been doing that and he says right now and instead of her saying well what's wrong with you like you're so selfish or whatever she says every passing minute is another chance to turn it all around right every every moment that we live and breathe and we might find ourselves walking down the road of secondary identities, but every passing moment, it's a chance for us to say, whoa, I think I've allowed my second, secondary identity to get a hold of me here. Let me back up and remember who I am, who I really, really am, right? I can share this with you. Um, as I said, like Vicki was saying, here are all the things that Danielle's doing. Okay. So if you were to look at like all my uh, 
what, where I am, it looks like I'm crazy, right? If I walk into a job and they were like, okay, you've been to how many Catholic schools in St. Louis? Uh, or, and you've done what? And now you're doing what? And, um, you know, and now you're doing this, like, you know, you worked for the Jesuits, but now you're not working for the Jesuits. And now you're doing something with the Marianists and you're, you're like all over the place, Danielle. What is wrong with you, right? That, that, that's what a, a job person would be like. She's not consistent. She can't seem to hold a job. But if I were to look at all of that on the outside, if, if, so that's looking at my secondary identities. But if my primary identity is to know that I'm beloved of God, to know that I'm a friend of Jesus, and to know that I am a temple of the Holy Spirit, all of my jobs are lining up with that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I, so whether I am talking about equity and inclusion, or if I'm talking about the Old Testament, or if I'm talking about, um, you know, Marinus spirituality, or if I'm talking about to you all, imagine if whatever I'm doing needs to fall under that, I am right in line, right in line. So it might look like I'm all over the place, but I'm not. And we have to begin, and, and I have to trust that. I have to trust. Because, and when it was, when it was happening, I said, God, people aren't gonna, I'm not gonna get a job. You've got me flying. I mean, this is ridiculous. I'm, I'm doing everything you want me to do. Please stay, leave me in a place for longer than three years. Please. I, I'd like some, you know, I don't want to keep having to figure this out. And, you know, I said, I, I'm just getting to know people. People are starting to like me. And, you know, that, oh, I like it. Okay. You think that? Boom. Right? So if I could be worried about liking God liking where I'm moving and God liking what I'm doing and how I'm being, um, then the rest takes care of itself. God's like, have you had, ever had trouble finding work? No, I haven't. Have you ever had trouble, you know, finding a place where you fit? No. Have you, have you been able to do what I've asked you to do? Yes. It might not look the way I want it to look, but I'm not the one in charge. And every time I start to think I'm the one in charge, I start leaning into that other standard. And I start thinking about riches and I start thinking about, oh, the honor I could have of just, I could be, you know, oh, oh. and instead of thinking, how is this honoring you? How is God getting the greater glory in this situation, right? Come in the house, Jesus, you are welcome. Come in this house, let your glory fill this house. Let your glory fill this house. Jesus, you are welcome. Let your glory fill this house. Let your love fill this house. Let your love fill this house. Jesus, you are welcome. Let your love fill the house. 